So let's have a look at digital certificates. With digital certificates, we have a convenient way in which we can actually put our encryption keys onto a, a delivery method which can then be imported on the other side. So, for example, Bob authenticates himself with his public key and it's often difficult for Bob to actually send Alice his public key. So what Bob does is he puts his public key onto a digital certificate and then sends it through to Alice. And this way she can identify that it was Bob that actually sent the message. So a certificate looks a little bit like this. We have who it's issued to, who the issuer is, and when the certificate is valid. And on there we can see in this case we have a public key. And sometimes we also have a private key. But most distributable certificates have uh, just a public key. Then we have a thumbprint to make sure that the certificate hasn't changed at all. And the key thing for credibility of the certificate is the issuer. If Bob and Alice trust the issuer, then the certificate is seen as credible. The two types of certificate that we get is one which is distributable. This is one which has the public key on it. And the other one is when we actually apply for a certificate, then what we get is a certificate with both the public and the private key on it. This key is never exported as another party could find out the, the private key. So a typical format that we have is the PB7 format, which looks a little bit like this, where we have a, a base64 version of the certificate, which is then imported into our certificate storage. And we can see here that a certificate has been imported and then we can actually view it. How the certificate is actually used is a little bit like this. If Alice, Bob wants to send to Alice, then Alice can send through her certificate to Bob. Bob can then take her public key from there, encrypt the message, and then on the other side we take the other certificate, which is Alice's private key, to then decrypt the message. It is also used to actually identify, and it's more often used to identify rather than encrypt. So in this case what happens is that Bob uses his private key to hash, to encrypt a hash of the message. This is then added to the message that's sent to Alice. Then Bob forwards through his certificate with his public key. It is then with this public key that Alice can then decrypt his encrypted hash and she checks the hash is the same as the message. In this way Bob identifies himself with his certificate to Alice. Okay, so let's look at the program. Okay, so we are in with inside encryption and it's the certificate. We can open up some sample certificates, some CER formats. And so this shows an example with the public key and what the certificate actually looks like. A protected form format is the PTX format in which we have a password on the certificate. And this is often used to protect our public and private keys. So if we open up a PTX format, we can see here that, that it's read a key in. Only because we've actually issued the right password, if we try another password, then it shouldn't be successful when we load it in. So one thing we can do is that uh, we can do a dictionary search on our passwords. So in this case, it's searching through a list of standard English words until it finds 
one which doesn't cause an exception. So you can see here it's found a password of apples. So we'll open up another certificate, sample one for example. And we'll do another directory search. This time the password I think begins with B. And we can see here it's found it. And the word is battery. So if we have a certificate and we we cannot find the original password, then it's possible to look up a standard dictionary.